Nobody is too important. Please, can we have the priest one? You, you leave. Wait, Abe, that shit. Come on, wait. What is this? Camera is not working. You are the black. We are not getting you. You are the bad. People should be able to civilize people now. What is all this? Nah, not about what I'm going to do. All right, all right. Thank you all for being here. today. My name is Alloy, Special thanks to Martin and the Kano and the Indigenous people of the Africa. What we came here to do today is very serious. It's about the travesty of justice that occurred in Kenya in June last year. Somebody was asking me the definition of extraordinary revolution. I told him the closest definition or the closest synonym to it is abomination. It's an extraordinary abomination that occurred on 19 June, precisely in 2021 in Kenya. You see, listen, I mean, this is very clear. We are not on a fishing expedition here. Nigeria made laws meant to be obeyed. There is one particular one that applies here, which I had operated in court very copiously to the Honorable uh, Justice. That is called Article 12, Sub 4 of the African Chapter on Human and People's Rights. When people uh, hear of African Chapter on Human and People's Rights, they begin to think, oh, it's an African law. No, it's a Nigerian law that was domesticated in 1983 by the National Assembly. It's just, it's just what is in the name. It's called African Charter. Article 4, Article 12, Sub 4 of that charter prohibits unlawful expulsion of any African, including Nigerians, from any country in the continent of Africa. And by adoption of the laws of Federation of Nigeria in 2009, it became part of the fundamental rights of Nigerians. So when you go to a foreign country and kidnap, abduct, arrest by whatever name you call that your misconduct, and take that individual from one country to the other without due process of law, you have violated that Article 12. Sub 4. It's a fundamental right. And what is the remedy? The remedy is you release that individual, you take that individual back to where you got him from and give him the due process of law. Nobody is, you know, challenging or impugning the authority of the federal government of Nigeria to exercise criminal jurisdiction within the territory of Nigeria. But when you leave the territory of Nigeria, you must obey not only your own law, but the laws of that country where you found yourself. So the federal government went to Kenya in June last year, and not only did it disobey its own law, the one I just pointed out right now, it disobeyed the laws of Kenya that requires federal government to knock on the doors of the judiciary of Kenya and say, hey, look, there's an individual here we consider a fugitive, and we're interested in trying this individual in our court. The, the Kenyan court will ask questions, and they must give answers. Do you know why they didn't do that? Because they don't have a good case for extradition. Just they didn't have a good case for extradition in 1984, when they attempted to kidnap Omar Rudiko. What is the difference between that of Omar Rudiko and Mazin Namdekan? Two differences. That of Omar Rudiko was nipped in the bud. Vigilant British intelligence caught them in the act and prevented it from occurring. Second, they tried to commit it on British soil. That of Nam de Kano, they succeeded and they committed it on Kenyan soil. These are the only differences. But what happened in 1984? Britain, in reaction to this attempt to illegally rendition Umaru Diko, cut diplomatic relations with Nigeria for two years. They arrested 17 individuals, tried them in court, convicted four, sentenced them to imprisonment of between four to six years. And they, they expelled the entire Nigerian diplomatic staff 
in the United Kingdom and interdicted the Nigerian Airways ticket, Airways plane, aircraft that was going to be used in the extraordinary rendition of Omar Odeko. That aircraft remains in UK today, a carcass of its old self. So the consequences of extraordinary rendition are clear. But what is lacking so far is that no court of law in Nigeria has made a judicial pronouncement on it. Everybody knows that it's illegal, but we need a court to also say so because we don't want to take the laws into our hands. So we still trust in the capacity of the Nigerian judiciary to see injustice and address it and redress it. If Nigerian judiciary fails to redress and address this manifest injustice, it's going to put a big question mark on whether Nigeria is a, a democratic nation or not ruled by rule of law. Or is it rule of men and rule of of uh, of of, uh, of, uh, of brute force? So, Lucas, if you prevail today, now you, you, where do you go from here? Well, if I I, okay. I requested for eight reliefs. Number one, we gotta call a spade a spade. The court gotta call it for what it is: extraordinary rendition. It's not extradition. Lawyers say ubi juice, ubi remedial. Where there is injury, there is a remedy. So if the court pronounces that it's rendition and is illegal, then he deserves a remedy. And what are the remedies? One, you restore him to Kenya if he wants. Or you restore him to Britain whether he wants or not, because Britain is his second nationality. That means you got to release him from jail. You have to release him from detention. Nothing can be built on nothing. If you don't have authority of law to detain, to arrest somebody, you should not have authority of law to detain that person. And he deserves monetary compensation. That is what the constitution says. In Nigerian constitution, they wrote it in black and white, that if your fundamental rights are violated, you deserve monetary com compensation. So the lawyers always put it there because the constitution requires us to do. But sometimes I'm dis disappointed that members of the media will pick on that and say, Mazin Namdekar is asking for 25 billion naira for his extraordinary rendition. That 25 billion naira cannot compensate him for what he went through. What Mazin Namdekar is asking for is justice. Yes. And that justice yes. lies in releasing him from detention and restoring him to Kenya or United Kingdom at his own option. And then you, as Nigeria, can proceed to Kenya and UK and file a proper process, initiate the proper extradition process or proceedings to have him returned or extradited to Nigeria. Why are you afraid of that? Because you know, under the political offense exception, which protects self-determination, self-determination is not regarded as a crime in any nation of the world, including Nigeria, under Article 20 of Nigerian law, that same African chapter. Article 20. Now, now, Kenya has a companion law. United Nations has a companion law. So when you take anybody to any court in any country in the world, and you tell that court, I want him in my country because he wants to be Afra, they will tell you to go to hell. You a kidnapper extraordinary, yes. whether you are government or not. Yes. You a rogue. You should not try anybody in court for wanting to not to belong, for wanting a separate nation. That's how Nigeria was founded, for God's sake, in 1960. Is it not? Yes. It's yes. self-determination. Yes. That was how Midwest region was created in 1963. Is it not? Yes. Yes. That's how Nigeria lost Southern Cameroons. To Cameroon, is it not? Is it, yes. uh, is, is that called referendum or plebiscite? And that's how Nigeria gained Adamawa, the former Sadona province yes. of Cameroon, into northern Nigeria. Yes. So why should that of Biafra be different? It must be. It's only a crime in Nigeria. IPOB is only a terrorist organization in Nigeria, but not a terrorist organization all over the world. Yes, so. That needs to tell you folks something. That is why Nigeria dodged and went by night ambush Martin Namdekano and kidnap him. We cannot take a government to criminal court and jail a government. But we can call a government to answer to the civil courts of this country. 
there are cuts in this country. So Nigerian government must answer to this court. Like I argued before the court, upon what document did you arrest him as in Ambika and in Kenya? And upon what document did you bring him to Nigeria? Until they have answered that question, Mazin Namde Khan remains a person that was kidnapped by state action, yes. by the Federal Republic of Nigeria, yes. and that will not stand in law yes. and in fact. Thank you. 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 Thank you.